Justin Ehler, a.k.a. Skidoo Junkie, back for episode two of Vintage Skidoo Spotlight. Today we're going to be talking about the 94 MXZ and 94 MXZX model snowmobiles. So in 1993, Skidoo designed a completely new chassis. It was the F2000 chassis. That was only available in two models, the 470 MXZ and the 780 Mog Z. Both sleds were huge successes, sold out. Everyone loved the new chassis, loved the new design, the aerodynamics and the feel of, of riding that, that sled. So another thing that was going on in the 90s was um, a resurgence in um, involvement in the snowcross and enduro cross and cross country race series. That's a space that Skidoo wasn't really that competitive in. They tried um, the 90 plus 500, the 91 MXX 470, um, just didn't have a whole lot of success there. They were limited in size to a 500cc or smaller snowmobile and the 470 in stock form just wasn't enough to compete with some of the Indy chassis 500s and 440s of those other uh, competitors. Um, so in 1994, Skidoo took the F2000 chassis a step further and they made kind of a, it was a, a one-off offshoot, uh, the MXZ. So every MXZX started out, started out its life as a consumer model MXZ. So in other words, every one of them came out of the factory an MXZ. So then what would happen is they developed an X kit. And that kit consisted of pistons, cylinders, clutching, gearing, carburation, and a different rave valve and Y pipe. Um, if you were a racer that was interested in running the I-500 or Snowcross, or something along those lines, you could write a resume to the race department. And if you were accepted, Skidoo would sell you and ship you an X kit. So the 94, if you were one of the 250 or so people that got an X kit, you took your consumer model MXZ and turned it into an X. And, and with that kit came the uh, racing decals, the X decals for the hood, and that was, in 94, those 250-ish sleds were the very first ever MXZXs made. Um, some of the things that were different about the 94 MX and the 94 MXZ was the suspension. You had uh, high-pressure gas shocks all the way around all four corners. And uh, the MXZ had the racing seat, the logo on it, a little bit lower seat. And then it also had the flat tank and the tank shroud. So in 94, the MXZ was the first and only sled to have a hydraulic brake. And that year, Skidoo contracted with Willwood. So 94 and 95 um, were the only two MXZs to ever have the Willwood hydraulic brake. Uh, Arctic Cat was the other uh, manufacturer that, that was using Willwood and I believe still is today. Uh, after that, Skidoo transitioned to Brembo. Uh, a few other things that were a little bit different is uh, you know the straight handlebars, the handlebar pad. Um, but these sleds, they ran pretty good. They made, uh, they made just shy of 100 horse, you know, mid to upper 90s, something like that. And a lot of people have said, and I've never actually, I put, uh, I built, I think three MXZXs uh, in the dealership back in 94, two for I-500 racers, one for a consumer that just wanted an X kit to, to ride. Um, but the cylinders, were rave valve cylinders that when they pressed the sleeve in them, the rave valve port was blocked off. A lot of people believed that that cylinder that went on top of these engines to make them X's were actually uh, predecessors to the cylinders that went on top of the 494 engines later designed in 96 uh, the, that went in the Formula 500s or, or uh, SLS's. But um, neat sleds. This sled started out its life as a dealer demo MXZ at Trackside in Eagle River. Uh, it had the X kit installed on it, was never actually raced. I've ridden this sled on vintage rides before. They're a lot of fun to ride, uh, especially on good trails. But uh, anyways, that's about all I've got today on the 94 MXZX. Hope you guys find this informative and uh, see you soon with another model. Thanks.